In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most magnificent, may the peace and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his holy progeny, and Allah's eternal wrath be upon the enemies of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Dear viewers, respected guests of the Imam Hussein television network, peace and blessings be upon you in this very night where we join to discuss the sermon and speech delivered by His Eminence, Great Ayatollah al uzma Sayyid Sadiq al husseini al-Shirazi in the city, in the holy city of Qom, where he resides to a congregation of faithfuls and followers of Ahl al-Bayt alayhum salam on Thursday night, the eve of the 11th of Muharram, 1440 AH and that sermon comes annually where his eminence uh, covers a wide range of areas discussing the most important matters uh, affecting the uh, visitation of Imam Hussein alayhi salam and the rituals of Abi Abdullah al Hussein and all the matters affecting the visitors of Abu Abdullah al Hussein uh, in this year and the years to come. And inshallah, during the time we have uh, allocated to us, uh, I will do my best to cover the majority of the um, points mentioned and raised by His Eminence, inshallah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to prolong the life of Ayatollah Shirazi and to enable us to serve uh, Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam and give us opportunity to continue the service uh, that we have towards Allah and Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam. His Eminence started his speech by offering his deepest condolences to the awaited Imam and Savior, Imam Sahib al Asri was Zaman, and to all Mu'mineen and Mu'minat upon the tragedy of Karbala, the martyrdom of Abu Abdullah al Hussein, peace be upon him. And he continued in saying, By the nightfall tonight, everything came to an end. Meaning, Abu Abdullah al Hussein and his family and his loyal companions were martyred on the plains of Karbala this afternoon, meaning Thursday afternoon. And his family started the sad and sorrowful journey of captivity and oppression. His Eminence continued in saying, the Shia and lovers of Ahl al-Bayt mourned and honored the martyrdom of Abu Abdullah al Hussein in the 10 days of the holy month of Muharram, which were days and nights of mourning uh, concluding on the days, uh, on the day of Ashura. Lucky were those who served in the path and on the way of Abu Abdullah al Hussein. Luckier than those are individuals who tired themselves, who went to extreme levels to serve in whatever in whatever ways they can. Abu Abdullah al Hussein and bird hardship and difficulties in this path. Blessed and lucky were those who became wounded, as His Eminence continued in saying. Lucky are those who became wounded, injured, and even lost their lives and were killed because of the service they offered for the martyrdom of Abu Abdullah al Hussein. His Eminence Ayatollah Shirazi started his sermon and speech with a passage from Ziyarat al Nahiyya, which is allocated to Imam Sahib al Asr wa Zaman, Ajalallah Ta'ala Farajahu al Sharif. And he took this passage so he can speak about 
the important points he wanted to raise. In the ziyarah, there is a passage that says, As-salamu ala al-mudham al-mustabah. Peace be upon the innocent and the oppressed one. The one against whom people came together. And the one whom these people made lawful and legal the shedding of his tear of his blood and his oppression. Al Mustabah meaning made lawful, halal, permissible. And this word Al Mustabah had been used as scholars come to describe the positioning of this word Al Mustabah in this visitation of Abu Abdullah Al Hussein. They say Al Mustabah is described here in an absolute and in general manner, which means it covers a wide area of meanings. That meant that the enemies who were present in Karbala on the day of Ashura in the year 61 AH. They permitted themselves and they allowed themselves lawfully and legally according to what they believed to oppress Imam Hussein alayhi salam with everything that was related to him, peace be upon him. The killers of Imam Hussein alayhi salam considered themselves as practicing Muslims. In the army of Umar ibn Sa'ad, may Allah curse him, there were people who used to be leaders in congregational prayers in Kufa. There were individuals who were scholars. There were individuals who had memorized the Holy Quran and used to teach and educate people in Kufa with the wordings of the Holy Quran. Those individuals they allowed themselves to go that extreme path and the extreme length to oppress Abu Abdullah al Hussein, to kill him and to bring him to martyrdom. These people committed all kinds of crimes in Karbala. Whatever you may think, these people done. They killed Abu Abdullah al Hussein. They oppressed him. They physically abused him. A group of people stabbed Abu Abdullah al Hussein severely. A group of people shot arrows to the body of Abu Abdullah al Hussein. A group of people, they threw stones on the body of Abu Abdullah al Hussein. A group of people, they striked and they hit the body of Abu Abdullah al Hussein with, the, with wood. And a group of people, they physically came to the body of Abu Abdullah al Hussein and they kicked with their foot the body of Hussein alayhi salam. But when it came, when the time came that these individuals, after the death of Abu Abdullah al Hussein and after trampling with their horses on the body of this great man and great individual, they attacked the camp of Abu Abdullah al Hussein. They looted whatever it was on the body of Imam Hussein and whatever was in the camp of Hussein alayhi salam. And, it, uh, and fina finally, they burned the tents and the camp of the women and children who were inside the tents. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as a result of the prayers and the dua of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, he protected miraculously the family and the women especially in the camp of Imam Hussein. Imam Hussein prayed on the day of Ashura 
and said to the women and children, Allah That means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect you. The Imam did not say these people will not attack you or hit you or beat you. The Imam said Allah will protect you, which means that these criminals will not physically attack you on a personal level. These women and children were subjected to heinous torture, beating, had their arms and legs broken. More than that, they had to hear and observe verbal and abusive remarks against Amir al-Mu'mineen and Fatima al-Zahra and Aba Abdullah al Hussein. His Eminence Ayatollah Shirazi continued in asking, but the question remains as to why all these crimes were and had taken place in Karbala. And the second question being, what were the roots and causes of this tragedy? Ayatollah Shirazi continues in answering this question. He says, as recorded in historical records of that tragedy, 30,000 armed men marched towards Abu Abdullah al-Hussein, towards Karbala, and were present on the eve of Ashura in Karbala, on the plains of Karbala. And these 30,000 army men, armed with weapons that would be used on a fierce battlefield. They came seeking nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by shredding and shedding the blood of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. These people, as I said, they counted themselves to be Muslims. By, but by committing this heinous act, coming to confront violently and abusively Imam Hussein, who is the Imam sent and allocated upon them by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that these people are obliged to follow where he would have guided them to the right path, these people, by committing this act, they proved that the religion or the so-called religion of Islam that they follow and their practicing of Islam is all a mere lie and it was all false. According to authentic commentary and accounts of the hellfire which was used this example was used by Ayatollah Shirazi as he said that in the hellfire there are different levels and in the bottom, in the last bottom level of the hellfire there is a pit, there is a well, a huge well and in that well there are 14 tombs, 14 boxes. And these boxes, if they were to be uncovered, as a result of the uncovering of these tombs and these boxes, the inhabitants of the rest of the levels of the hellfire will receive torment and torture. So try and imagine what kind of adab and torture lies within these tombs and these boxes at the bottom of the hellfire. And these tombs are allocated to individuals who were the source of all the oppressions and all the problems faced Islam and Ahlul Bayt alayhim as One of those belongs 
to Muawiyah to Ibn Abi Sufyan. Where Muawiyah was the cause of all of these problems. What did he do to deserve this punishment? To be in one of these boxes, in one of these tubes, in the pit, in the well, at the bottom of the hellfire. In the course of 20 years of his rule, Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan, he committed crimes which were the base of a culture established against Islam and the culture of Ahlul Bayt. Of these crimes committed were the cursing and abusing of Imam Amir al Mu'mineen, Ali ibn Abi Talib, and Lady Fatima al Zahra, the daughter of the Holy Prophet of Islam, Imam Hassan, and Imam Hussein alayhi wasalam, were also mentioned and named in these cursings and these abusive words and these were mentioned upon 70,000 platforms and pulpits around the Islamic states under the rule of Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan and on every Friday where the speaker used to go up the pulpit and the platform to speak and to deliver his sermon in the, in the Friday prayer to the Muslims, they used to start by cursing and abusing Ali ibn Abi Talib, Fatima al-Zahra, Imam Hassan, and Imam Hussein alayhi wasalam. And that was done during the 20 years, the course of 20 years, every Friday, for 20 years, these people used to abuse Amir al Mu'mineen and by speaking against him until the people of Sham and the inhabitants of the Islamic states under the rule of Muawiyah came to an understanding that the Holy Prophet of Islam did not have any other family members but the Umayyads and Bani Umayyah and his clan. The Shia, the followers of Ahlul Bayt, those who practiced the true message of Islam in the course of history from the day of the martyrdom of the Holy Prophet until today were a minority group. And these groups of the Shia they faced many injustices and they were pressured to sometimes disclose their belief once they were found out to be Shia and followers and lovers of Ali ibn Abi Talib they used to be killed and tortured and deprived of their rights reaching to a level in which if any Shia of, or if anyone in Karbala, next to the burial site of Abu Abdullah al Hussein, cursed Yazid ibn Muawiyah, the killer of Abu Abdullah al Hussein, they were arrested and sentenced to imprisonment, and in most extreme cases, they were killed. Fortunately today, as Ayatollah Shirazi continued in saying, fortunately today, circumstances have changed. And the world today is somewhat enjoying, enjoying better freedom. Today, we've, we live in a society and on, in a world that enjoys some freedom of rights, of speech, 
of practice, of belief. Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq al-Shirazi continues in asking this very important question, which all Muslims, all Shia, and all followers of Ahlul Bayt should think and ponder about. He says, my question to the Shia is, O Shia, O lovers and followers of the commander of the faithful Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ali ibn Abi Talib salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. When are you going to show the whole world the true picture of, the, of those oppressors who oppressed Abu Abdullah al Hussein in Karbala and those who oppressed Ali ibn Abi Talib and Fatima al-Zahra and Imam Hassan alayhim as -salam. Whose responsibility is that? Whose responsibility is to convey to the whole world the true image of the oppressors of Ahlul Bayt alayhim as -salam? His Eminence Ayatollah Shirazi narrated a story, a historical story where there was a political leader by the name of Yasin al Hashimi. Yasin al Hashimi lived at the time of World War I. He served as an Ottoman military officer with the Ottoman Empire and then later came to serve as a Prime Minister in the Iraqi government. This Yasin al Hashimi. He fought aggressively the signs and rituals of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. He fought those who practiced the rituals of Abu Abdullah al Hussein. Anyone who organized processions, anyone who came out and organized programs and majalis commemorating the martyrdom of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, Yasin al-Hashimi as a prime minister in that government in Iraq at that time ordered for anyone to be seen commemorating the martyrdom of Imam Hussein alayhi salam to be captured and arrested and punished and imprisoned. He also printed and issued and publicized publications, newspapers, and materials against Imam Hussein alayhi salam. He openly used to speak negatively against Abu Abdullah al-Hussein, whom his grave and burial site and shrine is in Iraq, the same land that he was a prime minister of. But at the end, what was his consequences? How and where did he die and perish? Yasin al-Hashimi, at the end, at the last stages of his rule and government, he faced military uprising against his government which resulted in him fleeing and running away from Iraq and residing in Sham, in Damascus, in Syria. And in a very terrible and lowly manner, he died a terrible death after two months of him running away from Iraq. And this was the norm for all the politicians, for all the governments, for all the empires and establishments, wherever they would have been around the world. Anyone that came and stood against Abu Abdullah al Hussein and the rituals of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, the result of him dying a lonely death, a terrible death was imminent.
And not only that, they lived a bitter life. They lived a life of humiliation, of belittling. Ayatollah Shirazi, he took this example to bring this image and to clarify this image to our minds and to say to those who until today, until this Ashura in Karbala in other places, they stood against those mourners who mourned about Abdullah al Hussein and those who participated in the Azadari and in the upholding of the rituals and the sha'air of Imam Hussein alayhi salam until today we find establishments from within the school of thought of Ahlul Bayt and from outside Islam we have individuals who year by year they fight and they stand against the believers and the faithful individuals who participate in upholding the rituals of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Ayatollah Shirazi says, I advise and recommend that everyone investigates and studies the fate and consequences resulting the lives of those who fought and abused and practiced animosity against the rituals of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. They faced nothing but humiliation, betrayal, failing, letting down, And those who objected to the rituals of Aba Abdullah al Hussein and those who opposed the Husseini rituals, not only those, but also those who are able to serve Imam Hussein and are able to support and propagate and fund the cause of. Aba Abdullah al Hussein and the rituals of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, but they back down and they do not support to the best of their abilities. Those individuals as well, they will face humiliation, betrayal, and letting down in this life before the hereafter. those who deliberately limit their service are also amongst those upon whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not look at on the day of judgment. The issue and subject of Imam Hussein alayhi salam is a very, very, very important issue and subject. And everyone who is able to support in any shape or form, in any way, in any way in their capability, and stands and holds back, they will be let down and they will face humiliation in both worlds. There are times where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not bring down his wrath and does not rush in the torment and punishment of the oppressors and the wrongdoers. And he will hold them accountable for their sins and mistakes in the hereafter rather than in this life. But in the case of Imam Hussein alayhi salam and anyone that has wronged Imam Hussein in any way, 
especially those who fight the rituals of Imam Hussein, who stand against the mourning processions of Imam Hussein, against those mourners who come to extreme lengths to organize processions and organize lamentations and majalis and events and programs comprising in the sha'air of Imam Hussein, beating of the chest or letting blood or self-flagellation or striking the head with swords and sharp objects to let blood, let blood come down. And those individuals who are able to support and sustain financially and physically and because of their power and position the cause of Abba Abdullah but they don't and they back down these individuals will face torment humiliation and disappointments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this life sooner than the hereafter I inform, as Ayatollah Shirazi continues in saying, I inform you, young men and women, young people, and those who were able to, during the ten nights of Muharram, to practice, to uphold the Husseini rituals, the Sha'air of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Do not be afraid in confronting the oppressors, those who come forward to oppress you, those who come forward to refrain you and stop and stand against you from preventing you in practicing the sha'air of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, do not be afraid to stand up to them and confronting them. If one does not encounter any troubles or tribulations in this path, then it means that they have not done enough. We should be patient. We should be ready to encounter trials, tribulations, and troubles in this path, in the path of Hussein, in the path of the establishment of the rituals of Abba Abdullah al Hussein. This will result in the happiness and success in this life and the eternal happiness in the hereafter. Allah and Ahlul Bayt have promised to fulfill their promise and obligations towards those who face trials and tribulations in the path of Hussein and rewarding them in this life before the hereafter. The whole world must know and learn who is Imam Hussein and why and how he was martyred, who killed Imam Hussein. We must produce literature to inform the whole world of Imam Hussein and the pers about the personality of Imam Hussein and about the movement and reform of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Today, Ayatollah Shirazi says, we have to execute our responsibility towards Imam Hussein in this path and on this way. The violence, harm, and injustices practiced against the Shia, the lovers of Ahlul Bayt, is not the same as it was before. In the past, we have companions and we have ulama and scholars who sacrificed their lives and their bloods of their hearts were shed for the sake 
that these rituals and the signs and practices of the Husseini rituals reached us. So we have to make sure that with all our existence, we make known to the whole world the holy sacrifice of Abu Abdullah al Hussein and the sacredness of his rituals. In today's world, there is a percentage of freedom and we are benefiting from the modern technologies open to us, but it is not in the quantity required. I repeat, as he says, we must endure all types of difficulties for the sake of Imam Hussein. We must inform the world about the dangerous culture of the Umayyads and the oppressors of Abu Abdullah al Hussein and why they committed these violent acts and who was behind it and what were the reasons behind these actions. Innocent blood was shed until these sacred rituals reached us. And this is compulsory upon us to convey to others. And I say again, all actions need be practiced and conducted in this path and in this way. So we inform the whole world about Abu Abdullah al Hussein. The other issue which Ayatollah Shirazi emphasized and concluded his speech with was the 40th visitation of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, al Arba'in. Every year, millions and millions of lovers and faithful followers of Abu Abdullah al Hussein they attend the city of Karbala on the 40th day after the death and martyrdom of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. The 40th day and the 40th visitation of Imam Hussein alayhi salam is one of the signs and attributes of the believer. And I warn those who say, what effect will me not going to visit Imam Hussein on the 40th will have upon the millions who visit Imam Hussein on this day? We should not neglect and lose sight of propagating for the 40th of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Everyone should do what they can in this path, even if it's teaching the fundamentals and pillars of Islam to those going on foot to Karbala on the 40th of Abu Abdullah al Hussein. All abilities should be freely provided and facilitated for the pilgrims of Imam Hussein on the 40th. There are poor people who have passed that test by welcoming and inviting and hosting people to their homes. Today, those who are wealthy and those who are able to provide and support and sustain financially should do more, much more. They need to provide and prepare thousands of hotels and places for the well-being and resting of the visitors of Abu Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. It does not make sense that political entities and establishments and governments today place visa requirements upon the visitors of Karbala. There will be a day, as Ayatollah Shirazi says, there will be a day in which this visa will be removed and abolished. And passports will be removed. And well, without a doubt, but why is it not happening today? Ayatollah Shirazi says 
governments today should abolish visa for all visitors of Abu Abdullah al Hussein. Ayatollah Shirazi says, no to visa and no to passports for those wishing to visit Karbala and visit Imam Hussein alayhi salam. But why is it not happening today in our time now? The officials should not let this opportunity and this blessing and source of eternal happiness escape from them. Officials must do everything possible to secure the visitors and to secure their movement freely from their homeland to Karbala and to Iraq without needing to pay or receive visas to go to Karbala. I pray, Ayatollah Shirazi says at the end of his speech, I pray that a day will come where all governments will cancel and remove visas and passports requirements for those who wish to visit Imam Hussein, peace be upon him in Karbala and record this achievement and happiness for themselves. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon Muhammad and his holy progeny. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.